towards at least the uh, the acceptance of some sort of military coup in Britain or the United States, and I remarked at that time how the true radical quote unquote change will not happen through the ballot box. Well, today I wanted to highlight a story that might seem inconsequential at first blush, but is in fact actually quite revealing in terms of the phenomenon that it uh, gives us a peek into. Uh, This one comes from WashingtonPost.com. Secret Service official wanted to embarrass congressmen, talking about how, well, at least one Secret Service official, the assistant director Edward Lowry, uh, basically tried to release, or, or did release, leak some information about a Republican congressman who had basically uh, embarrassed the Secret Service in a particularly testy exchange uh, at a congressional committee. So uh, Assistant Directory of the Se- Assistant Director of the Secret Service urged that unflattering information the agency had in its files about a congressman critical of the service should be made public, according to a government watchdog report released Wednesday. Some information that he might find embarrassing needs to get out, Assistant Director Edward Lowry wrote in an email to a fellow director on March 31st, commenting on an internal file that was being widely circulated inside the service just to be fair. And then two days later, a uh, there was a news report about this Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz and how he had applied to be a Secret Service agent in 2003. That was part of a personnel file that was stored in a restricted Secret Service database and required by law to be kept private. Well, haha, I guess if you're uh, in the inner sanctum of the, the White House and the C- Secret Service, it doesn't really matter uh, what the laws are. Anyway, um, uh, Well, uh, nearly all of the 70 agents at a briefing were discussing it. Uh, They uh, documented 45 agents who had uh, directly accessed this supposedly secret lockdown file that was required by law to be kept private. So massive major leak of uh, information here in order to embarrass someone who was uh, giving even slight criticism to the Secret Service. Now... This in and of itself, I mean, is not a groundbreaking story. I think we all know that this type of thing happens. But I think, again, it is a window into a much, much more troubling, much more systemically important phenomenon, that of blackmail by various arms of the U.S. government against people within its ranks who would seek to undermine the power or the interests of those powerful people with their access with the access to this information. One example of this phenomenon that we documented a couple of years ago was an interview with NSA whistleblower Russ Tice, where he talked about the NSA and how he had been involved in the NSA's wiretapping on a number of different U.S. Uh, governmental officials, journalists, congressmen, judges, Supreme Court uh, members, every single member of the Supreme Court, uh, White House staff, and a number of law firms and lawyers around the country, as well as some names that you'll probably already know. In your um, interview on Boiling Frog's Post, you, you mentioned specifically uh, General Petraeus? Yes, they, they went after senior uh, military leaders. Um, with my satellite stuff, I saw I saw how they went after they went after um, the State Department. They went after Colin Powell, Secretary of State. They went after General Sasaki. Uh, and then on the terrestrial side, I saw the paperwork as they were going after um, General Petraeus. Was Barack Obama targeted by this? Uh, yes, he was. As a matter of fact, that was in 2004, probably now, late summer time frame. Um, and he was he was a candidate for senator. He'd already won his primary in Illinois, and that's when I saw, um, you know, Barack Obama's name. All right. Again, there's more information, obviously, in that report and in the reporting that I was doing at that time generally, including a conversation that I had with Sibel Edmonds on this phenomenon of government blackmailing and how information can be used to basically tell people, you know, what to do or what not to do, what to say, what not to say, to circumscribe those limits by, of course, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, all of these intelligence agencies with access to all of this intelligence information collected through wiretaps and surveillance and what have you that collects all of the dirt on these people and keeps them in line. Now, as I say, this is an extremely important phenomenon and one of those that when you bring it up, people tend to, the keyboard warriors on the internet tend to say, well, of course, you know, we, we know they're all corrupt, they're all sleazebags. But somehow they still get excited by this selection that comes around every four years as if Donald Trump or anyone else means anything in a system like this. I mean, even without the morality of status, statism and voting, I mean, just the idea that there will be any change whatsoever to the status quo in a system that is ruled over by a secret 
uh, a secret government, a shadow government that has its uh, arms on the levers of power, the real power, the surveillance power, the blackmailing power over any member of government who would dare to step out of line. And of course, there's dirt to be had on all of these Congress critters. And for people who don't know about that, well, Sabelle has gone even further in recent uh, recent weeks discussing the Dennis Hastert case that came and seemingly is about to go without so much as a peep in much of the mainstream media. An extremely interesting case that gets into some of the real dirt on some of these Congress critters and uh, various government appointees and people in the heart of power. And what a can of worms this story really is. Uh, for people who haven't been following Sabelle's uh, podcast series on this, I'm going to link it up in the show notes. Please do listen to it. It's open to the general public. Please do listen. Incredible information. Naming names, the actual names of the, the people who were involved in these crimes. Just financial crimes and what have you. But of course sex crimes with minors that, of course, were recorded for surveillance purposes by the FBI, the CIA, and others, and was uh, and is presumably and has been and will be used as blackmail bait for so many of these scumbags who are up to their eyeballs in this. Again, naming the actual names of the people involved, Sabelle taking another extremely brave step here. I hope people will support it. Obviously, I'm going to have more to say about this and in more depth in the coming weeks on this program, but uh, stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, please do go through the show notes for just some examples of this. And keep this in mind the next time you think there's going to be some sort of change because of some political candidate candidate that's being selected into office by the powers that shouldn't be in their phony v- v- uh, voting machines. 